Hi, it's Dr. Atchison here. Um, here are the slides that we talked about that we're going to put online for you guys. Um, since we didn't get to cover them today, we decided to do that practice problem instead. Um, so the effect size for the t-test for independent means, um, we only do this if the null hypothesis is rejected. If the null hypothesis is we fail to reject the null, then there's no reason to do a measure of effect size because there is no effect, right? So if we fail to reject the null, we did not support the research hypothesis. We haven't found evidence of an effect, so there's no reason to do a measure of effect size. So again, we're only doing this when we reject the null. And we have two different kinds we can do. We can do Cohen's D, um, which is the one that you guys probably did in 3510. Um, we have the one that you guys were probably more familiar with where we're using the population. Um, we don't have those population means here, um, so we're going to have to estimate um, using our sample. So our estimated D will be the difference between the two means and then we'll just take the square root of the pooled variance. So if you did not pool variance when you calculated your T initially, you'll need to go back and pool variance. This is why when you um, when you have equal groups, pooling variance can be a very helpful one to do because you've already done the brunt of the work if you do fail to reject the null. Um, so again, we'll take the difference between those two group means um, and we'll divide it by the square root of the pooled variance. Um, we have the magnitude um, of these. So if we're 0.2, um, we're a small effect, if we're 0.5, we're a medium effect, and if we're 0.8, we're a large effect. And again, this is magnitude, so we're going to ignore the sign when determining the strength. So if you have a negative effect, that's still an effect. Um, it will still be, if it's negative um, 0.8, that's still a large effect size, even with that negative number. So here is some from, a practice, from the practice problem that we did earlier today. Um, so we have 25 minus 19 divided by the uh, variant, the pooled variance. So we take our 20, this, the pooled variance that we calculated earlier. We take the square root of 20, we get 4.47. We take 25 minus 19 divided by 4.47, um, and what we get is 1.34. So on this scale of small, medium, or large, um, what kind of an effect size would this be? Hopefully you said large or you thought large in your head. Um, yes, this would be a very, very large effect size um, here. So again, we took that pooled variance, we took the square root of it, um, and we got 4.47. And then we just divided that um, by that mean difference from the sample. Um, so again, we can either use Cohen's D if we reject the null as a measure of effect size. The other one that we can use is R squared, which is the percentage of the variance explained. Um, it's, it's essentially the same, it's just kind of looking at it from a different perspective. Um, so usually I'll ask you for one or the other, um, so you're not having to just kind of assume, um, but I'll ask you for one or the other. So the formula for R squared is pretty simple. Um, you take your T value, you square it, and you divide it over your t value squared plus the degrees of freedom. So for that example that we had earlier today, it would be 9 divided by 3 plus 18. So 3 plus 18 is 21. We would take 3 divided by 21. Um, and that decimal would be then translate to the percent of the variance explained by the effect size. So that's what R squared tells us is how much of this variance that's in this sample is explained by the effect. So it's still a measure of effect size, it's just looking at it from a different perspective than Cohen's D did. And again, they're both, both used, um, both are appropriate, you'll see both in different articles, um, and they're both doing essentially the same thing, they're just doing it from different perspectives. So here um, is some examples, again, um, kind of with treatment effects. We kind of talked about this before when we looked at the TV, whether they watch educational TV or non-educational TV. Um, and both of these, we have... Um, kind of the mean score, um, but we have um, a very different um, kind of distribution in the top, um, which includes the treatment effect, than we do after the treatment effect is removed. So again, we see kind of differences um, in that because of the treatment. Um, so the treatment is, is, is playing a big role there. 
Um, the other thing that we need to talk about is Hartley's FMAX test. When I remember I told you that one of the stipulations for doing a t-test for independent means is that we have homogeneity of variance. Homogeneity of variance, again, is just this really fancy way of saying, um, are these variances the same? Homo, again, means the same. So are these variances similar enough that we can do these tests? So how we calculate FMAX is we take um, those two separate um, variances that we calculated. So again, if you pooled variance, you're going to have to go and do these separately. Um, so again, there's, there's advantages to both. Um, so you'll have to do the variance for each one of those. So you would have taken the variance for group, the sums of square for group one divided by the degrees of freedom for group one, that would have given you one value. Um, the do sums of square for group two divided by the degrees of freedom for group two, that'll give you the second value. And you just look and see which one's the largest. Whichever value is the largest is the one that goes on top. Um, and whichever value is the smallest is the one that goes on the bottom. Um, so when you have a really large value here, um, that indicates there's a large difference between the sample variances. And again, this could be problematic. Um, there are ways to check and see um, if it's too big. If you're getting a small value, a value near one, that means your variances are very, very close, right? If you're getting a value of one, that means your largest number is not much bigger than your smallest number. Um, so you're getting very, very similar sample variances which is really, really good. Um, so again, this is what we're hoping for. We're really hoping for something small, close to one, um, when we're doing this homogeneity of variance test, this Hartley's FMAX test. Now notice this is FMAX. This is different than when we talk about an F test leader. So go ahead in your mind, say this is a very, very different thing. Um, on your formula sheet, you can write homogeneity of variance over Fmax, um, but say that this is different than the F that's on the back of that formula sheet, the F that's ANOVA. Those are very, very different. Do not get them confused because they're doing very different things. They're both involving variance, which is where the F is coming in, um, but they're again doing very different things. Um, so again, we will not, this is not the same thing as ANOVA, the F value that we're going to get when we get to ANOVAs. So just remember that. So here's how we'll calculate one. Again, this is the practice problem that we ran through today. We had sums of square 200 for group one. We take that and we divide it by nine, which gives us 22.22. We'll do the same thing for the second group. We had sums of square at 160. We divide that by nine we get 17.78. So those are our two values. Um, and again, we'll just look at those two values. We have 22.22 and 17.78, and we put the largest value on top and the smallest value on the bottom. Um, again, we're just kind of whichever one's bigger goes on the top. And this is this um, assures us that we'll get a number that is greater than, that is around one or greater than one. And we have a really, um, Good Fmax here is pretty close to 1. We have 1.25. They're not very, very different. Um, so again, this Fmax is a test of homogeneity of variance. And when we have these large values, it indicates there's a problem. There's a large difference between these sample variances. And one of the assumptions of this test may not be met. Um, again, we want these small values, like the 1.25, um, the small value that's close to 1, because that indicates that there are similar sample variances. So again, these are the two things that we didn't talk about um, in class today, the two kinds of slides. You are responsible for these. Um, so go ahead and on the other practice problems that you've done, go back and calculate the FMAX test, Hartley's FMAX of homogeneity of variance and um, go ahead and calculate a D and an R for those practice problems as well um, so that you have practice kind of running through those. Um, I hope this was helpful, and I'll see you on Tuesday.